Okay, uh, welcome back again to our discussion of chemical equilibrium. This is part five. This time we're going to go with Le Chatelier's principle. So, uh, so basically what Le Chatelier's principle is, is that if you have a reaction at equilibrium and you stress it somehow, which means that uh, you change it, so you add something to it, change the temperature, change the volume, uh, change the pressure. Any of these kinds of changes will stress the system and it'll have to move in one way or another in order to uh, find a new equilibrium or to reestablish equilibrium. And so, um, and so the idea is if you understand equilibrium, this point at which the reactants are turning into the products and the products back into the reactants, if, I, if I'm to do anything, if I add more reactants, so that's going to shift everything. Or if I take away some of the reactants, it's going to shift everything. It's going to essentially come out of equilibrium and the reaction is going to proceed in a way that as quickly as possible gets it back to equilibrium because uh, reactions want to um, establish equilibrium. They seek to do that. They want to get to that point where uh, it's even back and forth. Okay, so let's talk about the different things that could cause uh, stress to the system. So one of the, the ma easiest things to, to think about would be uh, the idea of adding uh, something or subtracting something. So let's just think about reactants. Uh, if I increase the amount of one of these reactants or, or both of them, well then, in order to, to, to maintain equilibrium, equilibrium, this reaction would shift to the right, you see, because what's going to happen is that it's going to want to make a lot more of this in order to compensate for the extra ones over here added. Similarly, uh, if you did just the opposite, uh, let's say that we decreased the amount of the reactants. Well, then it's going to shift back this way because now this is greater than the equilibrium setup. And so it's going to turn a bunch more of this back into these until the concentration comes back to the right point at which, which equilibrium is, uh, is, is desired or is achieved. And so that's the idea of, uh, of changing, adding, or subtracting uh, reactants. I mean, the opposite would occur if you added or subtracted uh, the products, right? So if you increase products, it would go that way. If you decrease products, it would go back that way. And that should make a lot of sense. Now, what about some other things? What if I just, what, see, these are all gases right here. And let's say they're in some kind of a reaction vessel. And let's say that I made that reaction vessel uh, bigger. So let's say this is my initial reaction vessel. And I just increased it into this reaction vessel. Well, now these gases have more room to spread out. And, uh, and, and so um, there's going to be a shift. This is going to cause a stress in the system. It's going to change pressures and it's going to change um, things about the way these, these molecules are bouncing around in this container. So, so what's going to happen? So um, when the volume uh, in which reaction takes place is decreased, the reaction will proceed in the direction that produces fewer moles of gas. So if I went from this larger container down to this smaller container, well, what would even that out is if we went in the direction where there's less moles of the substance around. So, so in this case, we have one, two, three, four moles of substance. We know with gases, the amount of moles of gas makes a difference as far as the volume. In this case, we have two. So it's two to four moles. So, um, so we, would, we would shift actually from the, from the side of four moles to two moles if we decrease the side. And of course, what would happen if we increase the size? Well, if we increase the size and the amount of space, the reaction in order to reach equilibrium would shift toward the side with the greater amount of moles. So if there is no gas involved in the reaction, or if the reactants and the products have the same number of moles of gas, then uh, volume changes wouldn't really have any effect at all. So this would only apply in the case of volume, and only in the case where you have um, gases that uh, have a differing number of moles on one side of the reaction as another. So if this was like two and two, you know, it wouldn't matter what you did to the volume because it couldn't adjust its equilibrium with that. And so there's other things that can cause stresses to a reaction. Uh, for example, temperature. Now if you increase the temperature 
of a reaction. And let's look at this reaction. I put the, the heat of enthalpy change right here. And so the, the enthalpy change in this is uh, negative, which means that this is an exothermic process. So in this direction, our reaction is exothermic. We know that because we have a negative uh, change in enthalpy. And so the negative change in enthalpy tells us that uh, to get from the reactant side to the product site, well, you have to take away heat. Okay, so now what happens, oh, terrible. So I'm gonna try that oh, much better and make that look like an actual H. So we're gonna remove heat to get from here to here. So now what, what do you think would happen if I increased the temperature? Well, if I increase the temperature, it's gonna make it more difficult to get rid of heat. So increasing the temperature is actually gonna drive this reaction back this way. And so the way we would say that or phrase that is we'd say that increasing the temperature causes the reactant to shift in the endothermic direction. So if the forward direction is exothermic, as we see here, the reverse of that is endothermic. So adding heat to it would shift it toward this direction. So uh, really basically when you're talking about temperature, the best way to remember it is that increasing temperature shifts it toward the endothermic direction. So uh, you do have to know uh, which direction is endothermic or which direction is exothermic. So you'd have to have something like this in order to determine that. Um, well, in some cases you wouldn't, such as a combustion reaction, you could make assumptions. But, and nevertheless, uh, that is what adding heat does to the system. So let's erase that. Uh, one more uh, stress that we need to make note of is pressure. Uh, what's gonna happen in this situation if I increase the pressure? Well, if pressures increase, the reaction, this is gonna be a similar, obviously this is, this is the same effect as uh, what doing the volume would do, right? So uh, the volume and pressure sort of idea are linked. So if I increase the pressure, but of course, you know, with increasing pressure, I wouldn't necessarily have to change the volume. So if I increase the pressure of the system, um, then uh, what's gonna happen is that it's going to proceed to the side with the fewest amount of moles, similar. So if I increase pressure, it's gonna wanna shift this way. If I decrease pressure, it's gonna wanna shift back that way, because on this side you see there's four moles bouncing around versus this side there's uh, two moles. So um, changing the pressure is gonna have a similar effect as changing the volume, but um, but uh, are a little bit different. Um, now, what if I added, what if I changed the pressure by adding an inert gas, uh, such as argon, to the system? It would cause the total pressure to go up, but because argon is an inert gas and doesn't have anything to do with the reaction, it's not going to shift the reaction in any way because it doesn't participate in the reaction. It has nothing to do with the equilibrium of the reaction. So it's basically just gonna stand still even though pressure's increased. So um, something that you have to keep in mind, if pressure's increased with an inert gas, uh, you're not going to have uh, that same effect that Le Chatelier principle effects. So that might come up on the exam. So keep that in mind.